Good morning, fellow reefers. Today, I'm going to show you some of the tools that I used to make my controller panel for my Reef 130.4. I tend to be someone who is highly particular in organization and how things look matters to me quite a bit, as I suspect many in the hobby feel. How do I make it aesthetically pleasing to the eye and keep myself organized and have an efficient way to manage my devices. Aside from the two wood panels, I bought this bit here. It's 1.5 inches and it's what I used to make the holes in the wood through which I put the electrical line. I found that 1.5 inches was sufficient to get just about any cord through it and still not make these gaping holes. I bought this on Amazon, Lenox. I think it was about $14, $15. I also bought these one and a half inch covers to put in the holes that I created to give it a nice finish. Just what I did here is I put a little bead of super glue on the inside and then stuck it into the hole so it wouldn't move. These were, I think, $5 on Amazon. A whole, it's a whole pack of these. I found these tracks to be really helpful. They have a little piece of, of adhesive on the back here that you just peel back and it makes a pretty good bond. And these little holes, you would put the wire through them as kind of guides and then attach it. And this fairly easily slides over, gives it the cords themselves some protection, but mainly, at least for myself with my black cabinet, it almost makes them disappear. All you end up seeing is just the cords coming out of these holes here. Most of them are black, so they're not, again, very visible. They're pretty easy to cut. I had a cutter for vinyl tiles that I used to cut these to the sizes that I needed. These are super help, both for organization, but also very practical. These hold your power bricks. It's, it has these two lips here and so you place them so gravity is down that way and they're pretty sturdy in there instead of using these with velcro where they kind of sit never quite straight you just take two screws into the wood. These were $6 per piece on Etsy. So I bought about 10 of these. Zip ties, of course, although I will say that initially I used zip ties for most things. Really, now, now I very rarely use these, in fact, because you can't remove them, right, without cutting them, which is a pain in the butt. However, these little Velcro pieces, which I also bought on Amazon, the theme here it came with a hundred of them about eight inches long half inch wide and they are just superb for tying cords up they kind of slide into place it attaches there and up like this now to remove it the nice thing is you just pull and then reconnect so it's easy on easy off i think their biggest fail rate is this section here if you pull too hard it will tear but they're very cheap and you get lots and lots of these. These little nifty pieces here are clips for the cords to guide them in a straight line, for example. They come in black, they come in white. I like these a lot because the adhesive is kind of this dark gray color, so you don't really see it. A lot of them, I noticed, came with the 3M, the white which for me, at least in my black cabinet, was very noticeable. They seem to attach pretty well as long as the surface is clean. I'd probably use a little alcohol to remove any kind of any grease. This is a short extension cord, and these can be lifesavers in a situation where you just need it that much longer, especially with a control board, right, where one heater is slightly further off to the right in the, the sump, and the other one's on the left, so it's a little closer. So you, all you gotta do is add one of these little nifty gadgets, and they come in different lengths as well. They really saved my butt in a couple situations. I would also encourage the purchase of some rulers that are triangular, because when you're trying to figure out the relationship of one item that you're putting on the board to another, this will 
give you a far better alignment versus just a straight one where you're trying to like first draw the line here and then draw another line here. You're far more likely to mess up these angles with a ruler than you are with a triangular ruler here. And I think those are the main pieces that I came across while building my control board. Let me know if you have any questions. As far as picking the size of your control board, and in my case for the Reef 130.4 by Waterbox, I tried to utilize the majority of the space on this left compartment here to allow me to fit all the current gadgets I have as well as any future ones. The actual sizes of the wood pieces that I purchased are 12 inches wide and 26 and a half inches tall. The actual cabinet space is approximately 13 and a half inches wide and 27 inches tall. The one catch here is that on the inside of the cabinet here, right on the corner there, there's a little lip that's about half an inch, so you actually don't get the full width to work with. Ironically, one of the most challenging pieces of this was the cord management, because every device cord length will be a little different, even if it's the same device. For example, on the top right here and on the top left, I have my MP40s. The one on the right is on the right side of the tank, which is significantly further than the MP40 on the left side, which is much closer to this control board. As a result, I actually had to buy an extension cord, which Ecotech doesn't make. I had to go through a third party, and it was rather expensive, $30. So it's hard to predict the placement. The way I went about it was more or less deciding where I was going to place the devices before measuring the cord lengths and decided that I would extend the cords as needed. For the most part, that worked. You can see in the center, I placed four 1.5 inch holes here in order to run the cables through. I ended up adding one later, which is always a mess and challenge, but this is my return pump, which is the M2 FMM here, which I have a number of optic sensors and one leak sensor attached to. I have my AI Nano power head, which is located inside my frag tank, which is plumbed to this same sump here, and the Tunzi ATO controller. I have my Hydros X3 here, which I'm using to monitor pH and temperature, as well as the apex, and I kind of use them as references to each other, the hydros giving me pH and temp, as well as the apex giving me temperature and pH, so that if one fails or if one's reading wrong, it will give me an idea that something's going on or that I need to clean the pH probe. On the bottom here, have, that's the return to my frag tank slash refugium tank, which is again plumbed into the main sump here. On the right here, I have the Varios 6S by Reef Octopus, which is running my UV system as well as being a backup return. So this is what is hidden behind the controller. It looks like a mess, but I feel like I have it fairly well managed considering how many devices are connected. As you can see on the top here, I have the EB-8 and the Apex right down here. I have the older version of the power block. It's the 8-plug power block. Just to give you a look from on top, you'll see where I attached the two boards together. I sanded the wood boards that I purchased from Home Depot, and then I spray painted them black. I like this design because it gives it stability, but doesn't completely enclose everything, so I still had access to all the cords and cables, but it also doubles the amount of space to attach plugs and power bars and such. I labeled everything here. One other tip here is that I put some fleece pieces on the bottom of the wood so that I could slide it easily in and out of the cabinet without scratching it. On the inside here, I tried bunching together cables that were coming from different parts of the aquarium. I have my Apex EB-8 attached to one surge projector and the other older version that Apex makes with eight plugs to the other. I connected one of the return pumps 
to one of the apex power strips and the other return pump to the other. I also put one heater on each power strip as well as putting one of my MP40s, one per strip, so that theoretically, if one power strip failed, the tank could still run fully on the other, as long as the apex itself continued to run. On the bottom right corner down here, I have the Ecotec backup battery, and that power brick just in front of it is for my UV. I find that it doesn't get too hot inside this cabinet because it's open in the back left there. And what's nice about the Hydros X3 is that it actually monitors the temperature of the device itself. So that can help me monitor that. On the very back here, this is where the plugs go into the wall. I ended up buying this little plastic cover that is watertight just in case I get some spillage from the back of the tank. It won't short the system. As far as cable management inside the sump here, I use these railings here that contain the wires. You can follow these rails down and inside of them all the cords are hidden. You can't completely hide the cords, but I think all things considered, it's not too bad. 